What's up guys, for today's video I just wanted to talk for a couple minutes about AirDog and why I choose them for the lift pumps on the trucks that I own and work on and whenever somebody uh, asks me for recommendations. So this is a rundown of all that information and differences of them versus competitors. This is definitely not uh, a bashing of anyone, this is just the reasons why I like to use AirDogs versus anyone else. So we're gonna unbox this, kind of go over everything just real quickly uh, to show you what's in the box. Also here, we have a Beans sump. I usually always run sumps on everything. I was never a fan of draw straws. Uh, they're not bad if you install them correctly, but a lot of people have issues with them not being installed correctly. One of the major reasons why Sometimes if you have a half a tank of fuel, a quarter tank of fuel, or you're empty and you install a draw straw and you try and put it at the correct height and then you go fill up, what do you think is going to happen? Your tank is going to actually slope a little bit. So that's the whole reason why sometimes they're not installed correctly and not down far enough to give people uh, a tank issue. So I always run bean sump for a number of reasons. Number one really is their one bolt design. A lot of people, other designs are multi-hole all the way, so this sits on the bottom of your tank. They basically have a flange, can't really see, can you see that, can you see? So they have a flange that uses individual bolts, I'm sure you guys have seen them online. So, and then you also have to RTV it or sometimes there's an O-ring built in. So honestly I think Beans has the best sump on the market just because it's a one bolt design they give you the hole saw, hole saw so all you're really doing is one hole saw hole put this up it's got an o-ring you don't have to use RTV or anything else uh, I've used these a bunch on many different trucks and have yet to have one leak on me so as far as leaks and there's also a video online, I believe on their website, of them bashing one of these with a sludge hammer to see if they could get it to break off and, and it doesn't budge one bit. So as far as hitting something and breaking off, I don't think you're gonna need to be worried about that either. So when they first came out, a lot of people were skeptical about the longevity and stuff like that, but I've been running them, a lot of people have been running them ever since they come out and there hasn't really been any issues with them. So this ensures that you're pulling right off of the bottom of the tank. So what's in your fuel tank is available to your lift pump completely. You're not relying on pulling out of the tank instead of flowing from the bottom. So when I do my install video on the air dog, I'll also go over the install of this bean sump. This is just a quick clip of this bean sump installed on my 2005. You can kind of see the fuel tank indentation it goes right in the center of that it's not very hard it's just one hole uh, and then bolts right on there so on to unboxing the air dog the first thing that they have in here is your harness uh, they have a built-in relay all of the plugs everything is nicely loomed and electrical taped not that anybody else's wouldn't be but i'm just showing you uh, it's a built-in fuse as well uh, a lot of people sometimes ask how it connects Basically these two connectors, you know, you basically unplug your stock plug, plug in this uh, male to female, and it basically just overrides the factory harness. Pretty standard blue push lock hose. <clears throat> the brackets that they give you, these are actually metal which they changed because they did have very hard plastic ones and a lot of people were skeptical and complaining so now they moved back to steel ones which i'll go over here in a couple of minutes as well too the actual pump like i said before this is a 4g model and the filter assembly And then this is basically everything else. Stuff to modify your tank, hardware, connectors, and also some of the other stuff to mount the pump as well. 
So let's get into it a little bit, guys. And also, just to reference going forward when I'm talking about this stuff, I am referring to Air Dog's new 4G pumps. Everything that I'm telling you guys is from my own personal experience. I've had multiple Air Dogs and multiple other pumps from other companies. So what I'm telling you is basically all formed off of my own experiences. So the first topic that I want to talk to you guys about is actually some of the bad rap that Air Dog gets about some pump failures. To make a long story short, the new Air Dog 4Gs, you can kind of see here, this is actually your motor. This is actually your like motor base, if, if you want to call it. Uh, there was a seal in between here. This is where your fuel is actually flowing and there's gears inside here. Uh, fuel would actually cross contaminate through this section and get into the pump. And that's the whole reason why everybody was always having pump failures was because of that. These new 4G pumps actually have what's called a stub shaft. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with what that means, but basically this is a complete separate unit now in the 4Gs. There's a, sha there's a, uh, a, a, a stub shaft that goes back and forth. So they're not actually, when you take this apart, they're not actually uh, connected whatsoever except for through that. So that's one of the main reasons, one of the main changes in the new Air Dog and also why the 4Gs are that much better than their old design. The next topic is noise. So the 4G pump really shines on noise as well. And the next two clips that you're gonna see is a 4G 165 installed on my brother Andrew's white mega cab and the fast that's currently on this truck behind me. So you can see the noise difference in the new 4G pumps is leaps and bounds quieter, which to some people is not really a big issue. They don't care if their pump is noisy or not. Some of uh, people really care that they don't want to hear that. They don't want other people to see their pump, hear their pump. Also along that same line of another small reason why I like AirDog over other people is the fact that you can visibly see how small this pump is. This is actually quite a bit smaller than some of the other pumps on the market. Now, I like the fact that it's a little smaller because it's easier to hide, easier to get out of the way. I don't really like to see things hanging down and have them be very visible. So AirDog is a really good choice to keep it tucked up and hidden away from road debris, stuff like that. Also, another thing is the mounting of the pump. So this, I don't know if you can see it. This is a competitor's mounting system, uh, not the entirety of it, but basically they use this and use a bed bolt to hang up. So you're relying on one bed bolt to hold this and to hold the entire pump. What AirDog does and what they've always kind of done is use two plates that sandwich the frame rail uh, and they have adjustability holes, which is nice because not only can you pick where you want to mount it on the frame, you can also pick how high and how low, which is nice because nobody likes to see uh, pump filters hanging down below the frame. You really want to try and get them tucked up as much as possible. And I've found that hiding air dogs and the versatility of where you can mount them is a lot better than other people on the market. And another cool thing that they have recently started doing is instead of pre-made hoses, they use these quick connect fittings. I don't know if you can see them. They use quick connect fittings on all their connections. So it doesn't really matter where you mount the pump, you can route your own lines and you can push lock them exactly where you want them and everything is quick connect. I'm a huge fan of quick connect. So I don't know if you've ever gotten a lift pump for a common rail or a P pump. You go to put it on, you go to start it, it's running. It's a little too high, it's a little too low. It happens, but the huge selling factor for me anyway with AirDog is 
gonna try and hold it up. Hopefully I don't drop this thing. You can see right here, that's their adjustability set screw and knob. So air dogs are extremely easy to adjust the pressure after the fact. All you gotta do is have an open-ended wrench and a small screwdriver. And if it's a little too high, it's a little too low, or you wanna change it for whatever reason, uh, it's always recommended to stay what, within the specs that they tell you. But if you wanna change that, very easy to adjust the pressure on air dogs. So quick story, on my pull truck, I had two AirDog 200s before the 4Gs came out. Uh, I had a pump go bad. Like most people, I had never sent in my registration card, my warranty card, whatever the hell you want to call it. I had never sent that in. Uh, I had a motor go bad. I called them up, and without a question, without even asking me about the warranty card, this and that, the guys over there sent me a new pump. So the guys over at AirDog really took care of me, and I believe that the guys there now as well are really strong on customer service and if you have an issue they will do whatever they can and the best they can to take care of your problem so another point i want to bring up guys is you can see this label this is right off the front of the box so right here those letters df it's called demand flow and what demand flow is is kind of just how it sounds what's flowing to your CP3 is actually what's demanded. It's not going to continually send, over send fuel and then just constantly return it back to the tank. So that would be considered what you would say a high return system versus a demand flow system. Air dogs are all demand flows versus other people's which would be uh, more of a high return system. So a lot of people will discredit air dog with oh your your ports your ports they're so small the return one it's so small well that's because air dogs with their demand flow system when you are idling and not under a heavy load the fuel that's not being used is actually being recirculated within the system itself so the return fitting on air dogs isn't actually returning all the fuel that you don't need it's actually being reused in this system and refiltered over and over again so if you were to actually take your return line off of an air a running air dog and put it in a five gallon bucket with it running you're not going to see it crap ton of fuel come out you're really just going to see the uh foam and vapor being returned, not a crap ton of unused fuel. So in a high return system, all that unused fuel is returning right back to the top of the tank. And when it does that, it's basically falling right back on the top of your fuel level, which in most cases is going to cause more air to re-enter the system. So. What I like about air dogs, the fact that it's a demand flow, like I said before, it's getting recirculated within this pump. So guys, I hope that cleared up some of the questions that you may have had about air dog versus the competitors. Hopefully explain to you a little bit why I like air dog over some of the other competitors out there. So just to wrap it up, I like their size. I like the way they mount. I like the fact I can put them anywhere. I like the fact that the new 4Gs are the quietest thing on the market right now, in my opinion. I like the fact that the new 4Gs have that stub shaft. I can adjust the pressure if I need to very easily on the fly. If I have an issue, I don't have any concern that when I call up AirDog that I'm going to be taken care of. So I hope this helped you guys make your decision if you're going back and forth or if it just helped you kind of understand a little bit of what the difference is the 4G pump is versus some of the other stuff out there. In the end guys, this is really just my opinion based off my own experience and the research that I've done. If you are deciding, make sure you guys are doing your own research. If you guys don't have a source to get some of this, uh, I would recommend you checking out Garofalo Enterprises. Uh, Michael will take care of you, so check him out. As always, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you in some way, shape, or form. I didn't want to clump this into an install video because it would just be extremely long. As always, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the like button, and we'll see you on the next one.